Life, no life. Life, no life. Life. It's all about the eyes. Making realistic art is hard. Or at least it was until I stopped making these five mistakes. Mistake number one, not taking the time to get your proportions correct. As a beginner, we tend to focus more on details rather than getting those basic proportions right. Which is strange because most of the time when I'm critiquing someone's work, it's those basic proportions that are off. It could be that the eyes are too small, or the nose is too long, or it could be that the subject isn't positioned correctly on the page. Which, when that happens, everything just sort of starts to get a little bit squished together as somebody tries to fit the proportions onto the edge of the paper. When you take the time to get your proportions right, and practice getting it right every time, it makes that creative process so much easier. If you're unsure what to do, you don't even have to freehand your initial sketch. Sometimes I'll trace, sometimes I'll use a projector, sometimes I'll use the grid method. Use what works for you. It's not cheating, it just makes my process so much more efficient. Mistake number two, not focusing on the basic shapes. It really helps to deconstruct your subject into simple shapes, rather than trying to jump in straight away, getting all of those refined details. Breaking down your subject into two-dimensional shapes provides the building blocks for the form later on in the piece. Thinking of your subjects as shapes is also going to really help you with the proportions because it's much easier to tell if a square or a rectangle is the wrong size rather than all of those complicated shapes and curves of, let's say, a lion's nose. I recommend starting all of your artworks by actually physically blocking out these shapes. For paintings, this could be done right onto the canvas with paint. For drawings, a separate piece of paper could be used to sketch out the plan. Over time, you're gonna get better at visualising these shapes in your artwork, and you're going to learn to just know when a complex shape isn't right. Mistake number three is not thinking about the three-dimensional form of your subject. Form relates to the physical volume of an object and the space that it occupies. Our job when creating realistic paintings is to convey that 3D structure onto a two-dimensional surface. Take my work, for example. Lions are alive. They are three-dimensional beings. They have shape, they have form, they have mass, and they have structure. One of the biggest mistakes that I see in beginner artwork is creating two-dimensional art that is flat and has no volume. These people have focused on those tiny details way too much, and they've not spent anywhere near enough time modelling that three-dimensional physical form. The easiest way to convey form is through light and shadow. We've already broken down our subject into 2D shapes. Now all we need to do is think about 3D shapes. Those cubes, those spheres, those pyramids, and how, when the light hits them, are those shadows going to be cast? You also need to make sure that you've got a clear difference between your tonal values, or your lights and your darks. Your lightest shadow colour should always be darker than your darkest light colour. For my charcoal drawings, like this one, I always try to choose a reference with a clear sense of light. The shadows and the lights on an image like this help me to more easily sculpt a 3D subject onto that two-dimensional surface. Mistake number four, starting with the details too early. This is one of my biggest pet peeves with beginner artists. Everyone is always asking how to paint details, or how to get their fur looking more detailed and more realistic. You do not need detail for a painting to look real. In fact, too much detail can even ruin a piece. The details need to be saved for the end of the painting process. After you've constructed those proportions, those shapes, and the form. 
You don't have to paint every single hair or dimple exactly the same as the reference photo. You just need to give the impression of those details, the impression of that hair. Simplifying those details and having areas that look softer and out of focus are ultimately going to make your piece look more real. It is worth noting that if you are going for a likeness, then look at the imperfections in the subject. It's those imperfections that make that subject unique. And if you are going to spend the time meticulously painting details, it's critically important that those imperfections are the details that you are focusing on. The final mistake is creating pieces with no sense of life. I see so many good pieces ruined because there's no sense of life and vibrancy in their work. The subject looks flat and boring. You see what I did there? Life, no life. Life, no life. Life. It's all about the eyes. I try and achieve life through the eyes in every single one of my pieces. I want you to be captivated by those eyes. I want you to feel connected to the subject. Eyes can be really difficult and they do take a heck of a lot of practice to do. And next week's video is actually going to be showing my process for painting realistic eyes. So make sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications. I follow the same basic principle for all of the eyes that I draw or paint. Shadow at the top, light at the bottom, and then a little highlight in those shadows. Sometimes I might need to adjust that depending on the lighting on the subject, but for the most part it works really well to bring life to that subject, whether that's animal or portraiture. And it's just those final touches on those eyes that really, really make that subject come alive. If you're really trying to take your art to the next level, then you need to watch this video here. This is the number one skill that every artist needs to be successful. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.